Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, and Lina, I'm sorry for rushing you. No, thank you. And um, because believe it or not, we have two more things before we finish. So first of all, we, I would like to invite my UN colleagues, UN Water members and partners. You know, Jack, yeah, you too, and the conveners to the table. So the, the, the objective of this, uh, the objective of this last table is to provide all of you some feedback so that uh, to pass you the message that we've been listening to you. Uh, we would like to, to tell you what we have taken home in the UN system in relation to, to what you have been talking about. No. John um, so first of all, and before we move ahead, I would like to ask Pilar to, to give you a little bit of the feedback on, on communications. You remember that at the beginning of the conference, we talked about the, the idea that this, this, you were not, we were not here alone, that there was a lot of people watching us, and that uh, we've been working hard to make sure that um, you could um, be seen beyond this place. So you have it? You gonna stay there? No, no way. <laughs> so Pilar, you, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you. Do you need this chair? Do you want to sit here? May I? Uh, what have I said? What have I said? No. <laughs> thank you very much. Just very, very quickly, so that you are a bit aware of what we have been doing to communicate this conference. As you are aware, uh, we have a conference website where since the beginning in English and Spanish we have been uploading different materials. You find their background, some background information, the detailed program, participants' profiles, of course, all the cases we have received, we have uploaded all the abstracts and we hope to have the full cases very soon. Uh, you will also find um, presentations. You don't see yet um, a link, but you can access them through our SlideShare channel and I will put a link this afternoon. You also have uh, access to all the information materials we have produced as information materials and also the uh, information brief, sorry, and also uh, the conference daily that we have produced every day. Uh, we also have uploaded different interviews that we did with you before the conference and we will upload some video interviews that we were doing with some of the case presenters here at the conference, like, for example, representatives from TOTO on water saving technologies in Japan, representatives from, from UNIDO on partnerships in MedTest, Greenpeace, uh, World Bank on water use of different power generation technologies, UNESCAP, ECLE, etc. And we will also have very soon a photo gallery. As you know, uh, the conference was also webcasted, and I hope we will have the, um, the trends very soon, tomorrow morning, I hope. Um, we were also tweeting um, today until 4 p.m. We had 450 references to our official hashtag which was Water Energy 2014. We had 230 retweets, and it, um, uh, I can say it was tweeted to 50,000 uh, uh, accounts were reached. Um, I would say that, that um, <coughs> tweeting was about communicating, and, but also about interacting. Uh, we uh, are experiencing a different format of communicating with people outside the conference. Uh, we had uh, very different uh, organization, uh, organizations contributing to the conference, like Green Cross International, We Are Water, uh, of course, WAP from the outside also, ECODES, etc. And we also had here uh, at the conference room some participants tweeting from their Twitter accounts, like Ana Delgado, Alexander Berbeck, Safar Adil, uh, and older people. 
Uh, as you are aware, every day we produce a conference daily. Um, I would say the graphic design is not very good, but uh, we try to produce at least um, some messages to extract main, the main messages every day from the conference and to distribute to, to you. you can, uh, they, they were distributed, but you can also download them from the website. Tomorrow there will be a last issue summarizing main conclusions from the conference. Uh, all the uh, presentations are being uploaded to our SlideShare channel. Um, we already have some visits to uh, the presentations. I would say the most uh, viewed uh, has been uh, the presentation from UNIDO, first place, then uh, the introduction to, um, to the business case session by the World Bank, um, and the uh, presentation on World Water Day by uh, Safara Dill. Uh, in the media, um, we will also uh, have very soon uh, media clipping on local, national and international media reporting, but I would like to inform you that at least the conference was highlighted in the UN homepage, so I think uh, this was um, quite important because I'm sure we, this attracted a lot of visits to the webcast and the conference website. Um, and to finish with, we also have um, a blog um, uh, that we hope uh, will be active beyond the conference. This is about water and energy issues and partnerships, of course, and we would like to continue discussing and contributing to the blog. Uh, very quickly, I would like to thank um, Benjamin, who has been producing the daily, Maite, who is in charge of the, uh, of the blog, and Carlos Mario, who is uh, reporting on an every day. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I think we're all very impressed, hopefully. I am very impressed. So before, before um, Adil, I give you the, the floor, I'd like to join Pilar, thank you, thank you, my team, because sometimes I forget, you know? <laughs> so I better don't forget this time. So I agree, I thank you before, Pilar. Uh, thank you, Benjamin, thank you, Carlos Mario, thank you, Maite. Thank you, Monica, who is here, uh, who has been helping us, and Jose and Tokuala, some of you, know them through you know remote media and also i think i would like before i forget also to thank the translators who are inside there and who have been really helpful thank you <laughs> so now adil tell us what are you taking home so we have a presentation <laughs> Well, this will be my last one, I promise. So do we. <laughs> Touche. <laughs> well, uh, I must say that... Uh, uh, sorry, I need to find the session. No, no, it was transferred. Uh, maybe it's... It was transferred. But... And do you know... Maybe it's in the pen drive still? Should okay. be. Okay, thank you. Well, I was going to say that uh, Josefina is a very tough taskmaster. I say that in a nice way and as a compliment. But she asked me to uh, put down the, uh, the takeaways that I can take to the World Water Day quite explicitly. And what I decided to do was not to try a, a, and do a summary, which I think Josefina herself has done very well. Uh, for each day, and by the way, I used some of those notes that were extremely helpful. Uh, but rather to uh, identify items 
along those four areas that I had suggested that, that I look at. Um, <clears throat> and, and these are essentially then those uh, takeaway points. The first one was about the uh, success stories for public-private pr partnerships. My sense is that our weight was slightly more towards developed countries, and I'm just calling them o OECD, uh, but there were a larger number of examples and case studies. Uh, there were fewer ones, and, and most of them came out today, uh, in developing countries, and again, I'm not deliberately listing, uh, I presume you know which ones they are. There were also some uh, very interesting uh, uh, case studies from uh, uh, from the private sector, and as you can imagine, I've done this in real time, so the last two sessions are not reflected, and TOTO should be listed as a private sector, uh, public-private academia partnership, which was also quite interesting. And there was one partnership, uh, this EIP, which was uh, indeed an international one. So I think there's, there's some uh, good stories which are emerging. Now it's a question of how do you scale them up. In terms of application of technology, research, and innovation, there were uh, some good examples in terms of uh, how we can improvise consumer behavior, and uh, I think there were a couple of interesting ones that came out from Singapore. There was quite a few around technologies, uh, and again, I'm not going to list each one of them. They're, they're listed uh, here. Uh, but the point is that there are some innovations which are uh, coming about both by improving existing technologies and by coming out with uh, brand new ones. In terms of the underlying research and analysis, uh, it wasn't so much that uh, we were describing uh, that the model complexity uh, is being done, but we recognize the need that it needs to, to be done. Similarly, we recognize that there is a need for uh, analyzing what the best cooling technologies are uh, in various energy generation uh, uh, schemas. The third one was around achieving sustainability for water energy nexus. And this is an area where there were fewer examples and a greater emphasis was on identifying uh, issues that need to be further explored. And it, by the way, connects a little bit to uh, the presentation I made uh, two panels ago on, on the research needs. But what was interesting was that there is a very significant fragmentation within the sectors, both in the energy sector and in the water sector. And there's also fragmentation or non-existence where the two link up with each other. Uh, so there's a fragmentation geographically in scales, uh, in how governments deal with it. So it, it was actually quite an uh, astonishing finding uh, for me, and I thought, for, for example, the energy sector would have had it much more together. We identified the, the need for making the business case for water energy nexus, and there were some interesting thoughts to livelihoods and creation of jobs, uh, and I think that's an important finding to, to take back. The uh, growth of uh, energy sector was a number of times uh, discussed, and there were newer options. Uh, fracking, for example, and biofuels were, were discussed, I think, at great length. And, and the question that, that arose, and I think it still is a question whether those are constrained by water, whether their application would be constrained, or whether we would find technological solutions, as we heard in the case of uh, fracking, uh, uh, recycling of water that might help people go around those. Uh, there is a, a clear need for reviewing the untapped hydropower potential, and I know our colleagues in World Bank, Diego included, have said now for quite some time that there is a large untapped potential, uh, but I think it needs to, uh, needs to be looked at a little bit more closely. And uh, scaling up uh, 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 the pilot examples of these industry uh, partnerships uh, was also uh, something that, that came out quite clearly. And the last one, how do we go around uh, creating uh, enabling environment and uh, incentives, funding mechanisms, et cetera? Um, I think there were quite a few uh, discussions that talked about water scarcity as the incentive. And uh, the question, at least by my, in my mind, was that there are quite a few areas where there's energy scarcity. And I can think of sub-Saharan Africa as a, as a composite region where that's a problem. 
and whether that will drive the inverse. Um, and it's it's an interesting point. Uh, but I, I think scarcity uh, was was highlighted, and I think you can take it to the extreme. And somebody said disasters and, and problems might create uh, those incentives. And we just heard uh, from Toto that uh, uh, the the uh, disaster around Fukushima and, and the tsunami actually was the incentive for creating some new partnerships. There were a number of good examples around linked policies. Uh, there's only a few, but I think we should pick those and, and disseminate them further. What was interesting was the uh, the gaps that were identified in terms of linked incentives, uh, not having integrated decision support systems. And there was quite a lot on creating partnerships, but I found very interesting was that uh, uh, doing so without public funding and perhaps using some capital from, from the corporate <coughs> sector, et cetera. And my final thought is that uh, capacity building was, I think, a message that I took indirectly because we didn't discuss it. <laughs> because it was the assumption, and I think part of this is related to what I said at the very beginning, that most of the case studies were, were from the developed countries. And the assumption is that the capacity for replicating those models in developing countries are automatically there. And I would argue they're, they're not. And actually, capacity building should be a major message that we take back in order to uh, um, create this enabling environment. So let me uh, stop there. And like I said, I'm not trying to summarize the, the conference, but rather what I think I can take back to okay. Tokyo. So n now I, I don't expect any of you to make such a long presentation at all. I mean, he, I gave him a little bit more time because he's organizing World War Today, so we wanted really to be interested. So I'm just going to come here and start asking you just one point of what you take home for you, for your work, and also maybe, you know, for World War Today. Thank you. <clears throat> no, I would, I would not even get anywhere close to this perfect um, summary that uh, Adil just, that just gave us. But I would like to pick up on the, the very last point that he made on uh, capacity development, um, which I think, of course, um, you know, also from the nature of, uh, of our CapNet program, <coughs> is, is an excellent thing to, uh, to do. Um, we've also been talking about uh, partnering and partnerships. So actually, also during these days, we picked up a partnership with um, Sustainable Energy for All, with, uh, with Paul uh, Yulia. He already invited everybody to a seminar, which is still to be approved. Uh, at the Stockholm Waterbeek. That's what I'm taking up is home is this partnership with, um, but of course everybody is invited. Uh, Adil mentioned um, that the learning alliance would be a good outcome of this, uh, this get-together. Um, and we are very happy to start such a learning alliance. Uh, me and Paul, uh, we have already initiated some talks. And uh, <clears throat> anybody else uh, interested in capacity development on the linkage between water and energy, of course, is invited to, uh, to participate. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Josefina, and congratulations for this excellent meeting. Good evening to everybody. I speak in Spanish because uh, debemos amortizar la traducción. To take advantage of the uh, translation and the only Spanish on the table, so please allow me to speak Spanish. Um, I think that uh, facing the world the water world day uh, in that path of water and energy is very important uh, that we keep in mind uh, in order to set the sustainable uh, target. It's not this, this is not a small question, but a very important one because it's going to orient somehow uh, the uh, global uh, path. So we need to set uh, the principles from the very beginning. So from a global standpoint of view, uh, we need to take into account two problems related to water energy. First one being that there is a big amount of people that are not users of nor good water, not good water, not, not, not even energy. So this should be a priority uh, uh, that goes beyond the other problem that um, we see the, the not developed country uh, needs to, uh, uh, they have that need of water usage and energy. 
and they still dependent on the developed countries. So we need to establish that partnership so we can all work together towards uh, getting that achievement. Brief. Um, for me, the, the main take-home uh, message or what I take from here is that you know we we confirm with the participation of uh, key st key uh, colleagues from the energy sector uh, that this is a very complex issue. That uh, you know we from the water community uh, had a very have a very very crude and basic understanding of. The, the, the complexities of the energy sector, we are starting to learn and get more acquainted. But as we learn also from the U.S. case, uh, this is a long process. This is only a, a very uh, mild or, or, you know, fresh or I would say early stepping stone. Uh, they, it's been ta it's, it has taken them more like uh, almost 10 years for them to really engage with the energy community. Uh, and complexity is sort of key, you know? The, the other, my last point is that I think that um, for the last couple of years we've been in dialogues on the topic, uh, discussing a lot of the generalities. Uh, now we are getting more into the into the details and the how to, and the how to also as Adil was saying, how do you move this to the develop, uh, developing countries, which is uh, very difficult. So I think that uh, you know we are moving sort of in the right direction. We have to be patient. We still need to learn. Uh, quite a bit, and we have to start moving the discussion also on implementation. How do you actually operationalize these principles, including socioeconomic aspects? Thank you. Thanks, Josvena. I think uh, this is a uh, right, a very timely event because uh, we organize World Water Day commemoration annually. Uh, Usually we organize this in Bangkok together with all the UN agencies uh, uh, in Asia Pacific. And at the same time, we also invite the member countries, especially those embassies in Bangkok, to join us. And we work with the Thai government. So I think uh, what I, I have learned from here, especially the partnership and also between the energy and the water, especially the, the, the theme this year, energy and the water, I think this is really the right uh, kind of theme we can discuss. And also from myself, uh, I'm uh, working in the energy security and the water resources section. That's exactly, we try to link these two uh, very important resources together to address it uh, in a comprehensive way, uh, especially along with this uh, process for post 2015. I think we try to work with the member countries to come out with the new, uh, like the partnerships to promote, to address this uh, kind of an access approach. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, the nexus is uh, complex. So all the more reason not to make it more complicated than absolutely necessary. So um, yes, I am very much in favor of global frameworks in which you uh, uh, position yourself. But um, we should not try to solve local problems globally. So I come back to my very old point, and that is we have to find the appropriate level of intervention. And the Dublin principles on integrated water resources management, as I have already stated that, join the relevant stakeholders at the appropriate level, the lowest appropriate level. And that's my, my plea. And this very much ties with the, uh, with the local authorities' the point of view that we should really... Um, uh, make sure that there is a good balance between rural and urban. I agree with Adil that it was a little bit too much on, on that side. And that means that the capacity development for the local authorities and the local people is absolutely crucial. For me, that also means that research and information on affordable and appropriate technology for the poor will be there. And that in the policy development, there's attention for this local level also with the appropriate resources to do it. Thank you. Yes, thank you. thank you, Josefina. So um, I'm, I'm representing UNEP here. As uh, Shaoui left, uh, yes, like that, that shared the UNEP session yesterday that had to, to leave for the office. Um, so quickly, yes, I have two main aspects that uh, I will uh, I will remember from this uh, from this uh, conference. I think 
uh, we've seen also because of the with the presence of so many people from the from the energy sector uh, that the, there's there's a great potential for successful partnerships. And I think uh, what was mentioned also one of the first day uh, was that maybe to go even further beyond, we need to make sure that we develop a common language, especially that now we have to uh, address issues like trade-offs and co-benefits and risk analysis. So in, in that case, you have to make sure we have a common understanding both in both sectors of what we are we intend to uh, to say. Uh, and then I think um, the second point uh, that I want to raise is the fact that. Uh, to make sure we're going in the right direction uh, together, I think we need a common red thread, and I think this red thread is, um, is the sustainability dimension that we have to, to encompass uh, in, the, in this Nexus Dialogues. Thank you. Thank you, Josefina. I think that uh, I'm taking home, uh, well, I, I, I heard uh, um, recurrent words, and I think there are uh, a few key words. I thought of the three key words, but actually Diego gave me the idea that there is another one. So a first, that is the first uh, uh, key word is complexity, which is the fact. So this is what uh, the environment that we are dealing with. And uh, the other three are collaboration. Uh, that means uh, partnership, uh, collaboration among uh, two different uh, dimensions, two different di domains, and two different uh, also ways of thinking and, uh, and, uh, and approach the, same, the similar problems. Um, the other uh, key word is uh, uh, coordination. And uh, because we also discuss about possible uh, integration or uh, synergies that are uh, much more than uh, just uh, uh, discuss among different uh, uh, some, uh, domains or sectors, if you if you prefer. But I think that is the most concrete way to proceed is to to go step by step and try to coordinate uh, from different uh, from different realms. Um, and well, <laughs> uh, I was expecting to, to make some more. <laughs> I think I'd like to, to, to reiterate what I said at the end of the, the session that, that I chaired this morning, that, but in a slightly different way. Um, we're all in the same planet together. Our future is totally tied up with the sustainable development. Water and energy are just two of the absolute fundamental issues for life which will mean we can or we cannot survive in our planet in a very short space of time. <coughs> so interconnections and interconnectivity at a global level are really important. We need to find ways of shifting our thinking from identifying problems to working in the solutionscape, finding ways of working together to overcome our problems. And I don't believe that that is done by labeling things simply partnerships or nexus. They might be both very good bad ideas or bad good ideas. My own conviction is that we need to strengthen the specialism of the specialists and we need to develop people who are capable of integrating from one discipline and another. And, and there's a tendency in the Nexus talk to think we can make every expert an expert in everything, and that's not going to work. So my message is capacity building, yes, but strengthen the strength of the experts and build skills in people who can talk across disciplines. And that's going to be very difficult to do, but I think it's the key to our future. Capacity development again, you know, sometime. Not, not so. Not so. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, and thank you for, to, all, to all of you for being so collaborative uh, here. I, I have, with the help of Maite de Araldaya, reviewed the lessons learned document, but I'm not going to bore you with that because I'm sure that we all had enough in terms of information, so we will send you, if I may, uh, Maite, the, the, what we've done. So I'd like to finish with a little bit of a lighter note in relation to your, the feedback that you have provided us with the evaluation. And uh, this is what you said it was good about what happened in the conference. And um, so they liked your initial presentations, the Diego, and, you know, OECD, uh, Cabinet, everybody. So they, they liked that part. 
and they like, uh, some people thought it was surprising some of what it was going being said. They, they like the translation, so that's for the translators, and uh, they like the idea of, of having long breaks and, and it was very useful to make contact. So that was something we learned from previous conferences. We were packing up really the, everything. In relation to, so to what we needed to do better, less presentations. <laughs> you were saying that, not me. Eh? And uh, so we needed to have more interaction, less presentations, shorter overviews. So that's probably my fault. And improve the interaction with the social media. So we could have had questions from the social media as well, not only between us. <coughs> A lot of people say that there were repetition. That's true. It was from different perspectives, but we talked about technology, we talked about uh, issues in relation to, to improvements in management, in governance, and we did repeat some of the ideas. And um, it, people say that there was not enough governments. I mean, a lot of the messages that were here from the companies, from the private sector, from the NGOs, they were directed to governments, and there was not enough rep government representatives. If I understand it correctly, we had the U.S., we had uh, uh, Japan, we had uh, the Netherlands, we had Spain, and, and Morocco. Yeah. So, but not enough. And uh, uh, people mentioned that they have done a lot of um, uh, relations. So some people say we had 12 partnerships organized. You said you had one, but you know, many people were mentioning that they had six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the conference itself was making a difference for their work. I think there's one more. Huh? Uh, in terms of ideas for the future, well, they want to ask to upload the presentations, no problems. They wanted to make more small group discussions and uh, to address more regula regulatory issues and risk management, I think that's also something like that. And they wanted more conference like this, which I didn't expect that, <laughs> that, that uh, uh, side event, which is going to happen here. And we are, we here we are going to see the, this uh, very interesting case from the, from the Canary Islands. We are going to look at also about how the Spain is, is sort of investing more on re reversed hydroelectricity production. We are going to see also something about mobile units on water and energy that can be useful for developing countries and the use of solar energy for water pumping. So if you want to stay, you are very welcome. And I would like to ask my colleagues from the UN to leave. Thank you very much.